Dementia is a complex syndrome characterized by progressive decline. You guys, welcome to our channel. The channel is Nazvi. And kindly, if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Today is very hot here. We're going to talk uh, very sp about a special thing. And we're going to talk about dementia. I don't know if you know what dementia means. Uh, we will do a video on dementia, or the, all of it. But today I want to talk about the top 12 foods that causes uh, dementia. The 12 top foods which cause dementia. So guys, sit back. My name is Vincent. Vincent is not your average nurse. This is where we get to talk matters medical in a simple language which you can understand. By liking the video, you get YouTube to recommend us to the larger population so that the basic information and so in a simple way can reach uh, a larger population as much as possible. So guys sit back and watch. So while you know specific foods or single foods directly cause uh, dementia, certain dietary patterns and also foods can be linked to an increased uh, cognitive and uh, cognitive issues and also dementia. So here are the 12 types of foods and uh, food categories that uh, are associated with the high risk of uh, dementia. So number one is sugar foods and beverages. So when you talk about uh, 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 sugary foods and beverages, that's number one. We talk about sodas, we talk about candies and desserts. High sugar intake can lead to obesity, diabetes and also inflammation which uh, can also, which is a risk factor for cognitive decline. decline. Number two is about refined carbohydrates. When you talk about refined carbohydrates, we're talking about white bread, we're talking about pastries, we're talking about past pasta, so that these foods can cause spikes in food uh, blood sugars, leading to insulin resistance, and also increased risk for cognitive impairment. Number three food is about what you call trans fats. We were talking about margarine, we are talking about packed snacks, we are talking about fried fast foods. So trans fats are linked to inflammation and oxidative stress which can harm the brain and also health. Number, number four is about processed meats. When we talk about processed meats, I mean meats like the bacon, we are talking about sausages, we are talking about daily meats. So this often contains nitrates, so linked to inflammation and also oxidative stress, where, which can harm the brain health. Also, uh, we talk about high sodium foods. When I talk about high sodium foods, I'm talking about uh, stick, uh, salty snacks, we're talking about canned soups, we're talking about processed foods and also excessive, <coughs> sorry guys, excessive uh, salt can contribute to high blood pressure and also which risk are uh, risk for dementia. So high sodium intake can... <coughs> Sorry guys, I don't know what's happening. I think I'm having an allergic reaction. So when we talk about process, uh, we talk about high sodiums, things like snacks, candy, soaps and processed foods because they contain high sodium levels, the high blood pressure comes in, which is a risk factor for dementia. Artificial sweeteners like uh, what you call diet sodas and sugar-free snacks. Some st uh, studies suggest that artificial sweeteners may negatively affect the brain health and also although the evidence is not very conclusive but artificial sweeteners can also contribute to this. Also red meat, uh, when we talk about beef and pork, high consumption of red meat, especially processed varieties, uh, has been linked, linked to inflammation, to increased inflammation and cardiovascular issues that affect the brain health at the end of the day. Also, uh, what we don't like talking about, alcohol can also, excessive alcohol consumption, uh, because chronic heavy drinking can lead to brain damage and also increase the risk of developing uh, dementia. Fried foods is also another one. When we talk about fried foods, we're talking about French, uh, French uh, fries, fried chicken, and also duff nuts. So with this, high and healthy fats uh, and often cooked uh, in oils that, that produce harmful uh, compounds. So fried foods contribute to oxidative stress and also in inflammation. Number 10 is about highly processed foods. 
and these fruits are like ready to eat meals and fast foods. These foods are often high in unhealthy fats, sugars and also additives which can negatively impact the brain health over time. So we check on that high processed uh, foods which can really affect uh, the excessive stress and also impact the brain negatively. High fat daily products, also full fat cheese and butter. Saturated fats uh, is high uh, in high uh, daily products can contribute to cardiovascular disease and also which can turn uh, in turn can, can cause dementia at the end of the day. Number twelve is about foods high in advanced uh, glycation, uh, glycation and products, what you call AGs. So with this, uh, we're talking about grilled, fried uh, or boiled meats. Uh, AG is what you call food high in advanced glycation end products or AGEs. -A 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 so they are a harmful compound from when potential or fatty combined with sugar in the bloodstream. Because of the high level of AGs, uh, can contribute to oxidative stress and also uh, uh, unintended inflammation, which are, uh, are linked to cognitive decline. So those are the 12 foods. So uh, on the tips on brain health diet, so uh, how are we supposed to manage the, these risks for dementia? So, so normally we talk about diet and also lifestyle. By adopting a lifestyle, uh, health lifestyle habits which support our brain health, he, uh, we have some strategies, strategies in reducing dementia. Number one is about dietary management. When we talk about dietary management, we're talking about uh, adopting a brain health diet. We, uh, we talk of med Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet is very important. We are focused on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, uh, fish, nuts, and over olive oil is very key. This diet is rich in antioxidants and also healthy fats. Number two is about the DASH diet. We talk about dietary approaches to stop hypertension, that is the dash in full. This emphasizes on, on vegetables intake, fruits intake, whole grains intake, lean protein intake, and limiting sugar, salt, and also red meat. Number two is about increasing in uh, antioxidative intake. So with this, we take berries. When we talk about berries, I'm talking about the blueberries, strawberries, and other berries which are high in antioxidants that protects the brain cells from damage. Also, ducky leafy, leafy uh, vegetable. Uh, we talk about uh, spin, spinach, we talk about kale, we talk about uh, other greens which are rich in vitamins and also antioxidants. Also, number three is about consume healthy fats. We talk about omega-3 uh, fat acids, uh, fat acids found in uh, thing, uh, fish like uh, salmon. We talk about mackerel and sadness. Uh, also flax seeds also are high in this walnuts uh, the omega-3 is are very crucial for brain health also limit unhealthy foods where you reduce uh, sugar and refined carbs minimize consumption of sugary foods and beverages uh, also white bread and also pastries so very key also avoid trans fats and processed foods limit intake of margarine packaged snacks and also fried for, uh, foods also, moderate alcohol intake, where if you drink alcohol, do so in moderation because excessive alcohol consumption is a great risk, uh, risk for dementia. Lifestyle management, where regular physical activity is very key. We aim at uh, 150 minutes of moderate to intensity exercise per week, which is very key, where you get to exercise yourself uh, for 150 minutes in, a in the week. So with uh, moderate to intensity exercise, strength training, is also very important when you incorporate strength training exercises at least two days uh, per week. Also, mental uh, stimulation is very key, where you, uh, by doing uh, brain exercises, engage activities that challenge your, your brain at the end of the day, such as puzzles, uh, reading, new, uh, learning new skills, or playing musical instruments is very key. It has been seen uh, where you, you reduce the chances of developing uh, dementia. So brain exercises such as uh, filling those puzzles, reading, uh, learning new skills or playing uh, especially musical instruments like piano 
or the keyboard is very key to reduce the risk of uh, dementia. Also, social interaction is very key. Active participating in community activities, clubs, or spending time with friends and family is also very key. Also, uh, another very important aspect is about uh, adequate sleep or quality sleep. We, uh, we talk about seven to nine hours of quality sleep per night. Poor sleep can uh, impair uh, cognitive uh, function and increase the dementia risk. Also, uh, sleep hygiene, maintain a regular sleeping schedule where you create rest for environment for your for your, for yourself at that particular at that particular point so that you avoid uh, screens before bedtime also medical manage on medical management we talk about manage chronic illnesses especially for control for diabetes we want you to control the diabetes management to you keep the sugars within the normal range if you have uh, high blood pressure also you keep uh, pressure in a significant low 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 uh, low, low levels where you also monitor and manage the truth diet, exercise and meditation if needed. Also cholesterol levels, monitor your cholesterol levels through diet and also medication if necessary. Regular checkups is very key also guys, where you routine check screening and also uh, the conditions that, that can affect the brain like hypertension, diabetes like I mentioned and high cholesterol. Follow up medical advice is very key where treatment as prescribed should be taken and also for any chronic illnesses, treat the, uh, let the healthcare provider guide you accordingly on how you can get to manage them. Also, uh, on mental and emotional health is very key where mindfulness and meditation comes in and also relaxation techniques, things like meditation, yoga, and also uh, improve on, they can improve your mental health. Also, uh, very important is about uh, doing deep breathing exercises Engaging in your hobbies and spending time in nature can also improve yeah, or can take care of your brain so that you don't develop those, such problems as those ones of uh, developing dementia. On the environmental and lifestyle factors, avoid smoking or avoid smoking. Smoking is a significant factor for cognitive decline and dementia, so seek help to quit smoking if you are uh, an addict of, uh, of smoking. Also, stay hydrated. Water intake is very key, where you drink enough water throughout the day to stay hydrated and also because dehydration can affect your cognitive function. So by integrating the dietary changes, individuals can effectively manage the risk of developing dementia. The strategies not only uh, promote brain health, can also improve the overall well-being of an individual. So it's important to consult with the healthcare provider for personalized advice and regular uh, monitoring. So sometimes we have the complications which come up about with the dementia. Uh, it, uh, dementia, it also includes Alzheimer's disease and other types. So it can lead to a range of complications that affect the aspects of an individual's overall health. And the key complication associated with dementia, number one is about cognitive decline, where memory loss uh, is, uh, is very key where progressive memory loss that can affect daily activities and also acti uh, and, uh, and life. Difficulty with communication, where challenges in finding the right words, following conversation and understanding language can also pop in at that particular point. In bad judgment and reasoning is also another thing where we difficulty in making decisions and solving uh, and, uh, and, uh, and understanding risks of the kind of judgments made. So on behavioral and psychological symptoms, we have depression and anxiety popping in. Mood disorders are common in, in, in people with dementia. Agitation and aggression, where increased irritability, frustration, and the potentially aggressive behavior can also come in. Hallucinations can also, and delusions, where one sees and hears and believes in things that aren't real, can also pop in. On the physical health problems as complications, we may have poor nutrition. Difficulty in eating and drinking can lead to loss of uh, uh, weight, malnutrition, and also dehydration. Infections can also be another problem because it increases susceptibility for infections such as urinary tract infection, pneumonia due to weakened immune response, and decreased mobility. Sleep disorders also can pop in because of the changes in uh, sleep patterns, including the insomnia, also excessive daytime sleepness, sleepness and sundowning where we have uh, an increased uh, confusion and also agitation in the evening. Sundowning is increased confusion and agitation in the evening. 
So also we have a complication called functional uh, decline, where there's loss of mobility, where gradual loss of ability to walk, stand or sit, uh, or independently, or sit independently can lead to increased risk of uh, uh, falls and also injuries. Also loss of independence, where difficulty in performing daily activities such as dressing, bathing, using toilet requires increased assistance and care. Communication difficulties, we may have trouble in expressing it and understanding the others, leading to frustration and isolation. Increased risk for accidents is also another one, where falls due to impaired balance, coordination and judgment, people with dementia are at a high risk of falling. Also wandering, tenants to wander and get lost, where we, which, which can be very dangerous, especially if a person is unable to communicate their identity or needs. Caregiver yeah, stress, so those people who take care of these people also can have a problem, especially the family. We have emotional and physical strain. Caring for persons with dementia can lead to frustration and lead to significant stress and anxiety, depression, and also physical exhaustion of the caregiver. Also, financial burden, where we may have the cost of care, including medical expenses, home modification, and the professional caregiver services can be very substantial. So social isolation is also another problem which can pop in where withdrawal from social activities. As dementia uh, progresses, the individuals may withdraw from social interactions and activities they, want, uh, they once enjoyed. <coughs> so stigma and misunderstanding also comes in where we misunderstand the stigma associated with dementia can be related to isolation for personal affected with the dementia and also social isolation can be a, uh, another complication. Uh, so, uh, social, social isolation can be another one. As dementia progresses, individuals may be withdrawn from social interactions where activities one is enjoyed can be a problem. On the end of life issues, we may have palliative care needs. Advanced dementia requires palliative care to manage symptoms and also provide comfort. Ethical and legal decisions, decision regarding end life uh, care, advanced directives, and also legal matters such as power of attorney become very critical at that particular point. On the, on the strategies to manage and mitigate the, the, the complications, regular monitoring and medication is very key. Supportive care is also key in this uh, particular point. So uh, on the prevention part of it, we talk about Mediterranean diet, we talk about uh, Dutch diet, antioxidant-rich foods are very key, healthy fats, omega-3, uh, fat acids, they are very key. Regular physical activities is very key. So also mental, mental stimulation as a way of prevention where you do brain exercises. Brain exercises include the puzzles, reading, new, learning new skills, and also playing musical instruments such as keyboard and piano. <laughs> and also actually guitar, you can also play it, I'm sorry for that. So social engagement, so social activities uh, where we want stays social, social, social active by uh, active, uh, by active in participating community activities in the clubs, and also spending time to friends and family. They are very key. So social engagement helps maintain cognitive function and emotional well-being. Uh, on build up of strong uh, relationships, foster and maintain strong relationships to reduce feelings of isolation and loneliness. Number six is about managing chronic conditions, controlled uh, blood pressure, high blood pressure, can be, which is, can be a contributing factor, diabetes management and also cholesterol levels to keep them under control. Avoiding smoking is another way where you quit smoking uh, because this one can significantly, uh, smoking can significantly affect your health and also lead to dementia. Moderate alcohol consumption is very key. So excessive alcohol consumption can lead to brain uh, damage and increased risk of dementia. Stress management, land relaxation techniques and also health coping mechanisms. So very important where you learn about mindfulness, meditation and also yoga and also stress uh, which can improve your well-being. Engage in hobbies and physical activities, social interaction to manage stress uh, effectively, guys. Maintaining the healthy weight is also very key. Where balanced diet is, uh, is very key where you get to maintain high health, health weight through balanced diet and regular uh, physical activity where because obesity is a risk factor for dementia. Also, very key is about environmental factors where you stay hydrated and also where throughout the day stay hydrated 
avoid head injuries. This is very key. Take precaution to not to injure your head. This is why some people don't need to take it very seriously. So head injuries can predispose you to uh, to this dementia thing. So always wear seat belts if you are in the car. Use helmets on the motorcycle and avoid falls and also knocking the head. So it is also includes the parents knocking the head of a child or the the caretaker knocking the child the head is the head of the child. It can affect that child at the end of the day. So preventing dementia, dementia involves smart faced uh, approach that includes a healthy living, regular physical activity, mental stimulation, quality sleep, social engagement, and also managing chronic conditions. So adopting this lifestyle uh, changes can significantly reduce the risk of uh, cognitive decline and improve overall uh, brain health, regular uh, consultation, the healthcare and also professional continuous adaptation of the preventive strategies as a show in maintaining the, uh, the, the brain health. So uh, this uh, dementia thing can affect our brain at the end of, at the, end of the day, guys. Uh, but uh, we, we, uh, we've mentioned how to manage it if it is there and how to help those people who are suffering from it because it's a very common thing and it can really render you uh, with a lot of challenges but uh, when taken with a lot of care especially from the diet and managing the underlying conditions it can really help you it is very essential for you to seek that help from your healthcare provider and also if, uh, your, if the one is affected in the family will help him or her to be very careful and also to uh, how to manage uh, because sometimes uh, the, these people cannot manage uh, uh, them very well. So dementia is a very is a complex syndrome and it's characterized by decline in cognitive uh, uh, in cognitive uh, decline. Dementia is a complex syndrome characterized by progressive decline and also in cognitive function beyond what might be expected from normal aging. It affects memory, thinking, orientation, comprehension, calculation, uh, learning capacity, language, and judgment. So the key aspects related to dementia are as follows. Number one, we talk about the causes. This is called, it's called neuro, neuro, neurogenerative disease. In Alzheimer's disease, is the most common cause, accounting for 60 to 70 percent of the cases. Other neurodegenerative diseases include what you call Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, and also vascular uh, dementia. And we, also, we have vascular uh, causes. Conditions affecting the blood vessels can lead to vascular dementia. Other causes, especially what you call Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, traumatic brain injury, and infections affect the brain, such as HIV. So, all can also contribute to the same. So, those are the major causes. We talk about neurogenerative diseases, like just such as the Alzheimer, accounting for 60 to 70 percent. With other neurodegenerative diseases such as Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, and also vascular dementia. On the vascular factors, we have conditions affecting blood vessels, which can lead to vascular dementia, especially the hypertension part of it. Other causes also, we have Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, trauma, trauma brain injury, and if infections affecting the brain, especially in the part of the HIV can also contribute the same. Signs and symptoms for dementia, number one is about memory loss, particularly recent memories, forgetting appointments or events, difficulty with the familiar task, tasks, challenges with the task which were previously routine, language problems where one trouble finding one's or understanding conversation, disorientation, getting lost in familiar places or losing track of time, uh, poor judgment, making decisions that are inappropriate, or risky, changes in mood behavior, uh, mood or behavior, mood swings, agitation or withdrawal, loss of initiative where apathy and lack of motivation to initiate activities come, comes in. How do you make a diagnosis for dementia? Clinical evaluation includes detailed medical history, 
where cognitive test and assessment of daily functioning is very key. So brain imaging, we can do MRI and CT scan, which can detect brain changes. Blood test to rule out any possible causes of the symptoms is also very key. On management, we do medication. Well, this medication approach temporarily improves symptoms or a slow progression of the types of dementia, and such as the Alzheimer's disease. Behavioral approaches where strategies to manage symptoms like agitation and wandering are approached. Uh, supportive care where I include assistance with daily activities and emotional support uh, for the for the patient. Supportive care including assistance with daily daily activities and emotional support, clinical trials and decided investigating the new treatment for the therapies. On prevention, healthy lifestyle is very key. Managing chronic conditions such as diabetes, blood pressure, and also high cholesterol levels. Uh, stay socially and mentally active is very key. Where one involves in brain exercises, uh, like uh, uh, the, like uh, playing the keyboard, playing the guitar, and also filling those puzzles, and also learning new skills is very key as a brain exercise. Dementia is very challenging, guys. The condition affects millions worldwide. Early diagnosis and appropriate management strategies and ongoing for uh, and ongoing support for the patients are very key for the from the caregivers uh, and also to the healthcare providers to improve the quality of life and manage the progression of the disease. A lot of research is ongoing on parts of dementia and a lot of information is being shared over the same. So because uh, it has a lot of details and a lot of things which can have not been really revealed over the same. So guys, uh, the channel is Nazvin. Can't leave your group subscribed. I want you to subscribe. By liking the video, you get YouTube to recommend us to the larger population. Why? When you get to like the video, uh, uh, YouTube recommends us. And uh, the difficult, the, without a lot of medical jargon, the larger population gets this information so that you don't you don't need to be a medic to understand what dementia means because like we've seen it affects a lot of a lot of people and millions of people were the same so information is power and that's why vincent is here for you guys welcome to our next video we love you very much and peace decline and also in cognitive function beyond what might be expected from normal aging it affects memory Thinking, orientation, comprehension, calculation, uh, learning capacity, language, and judgment. So the key aspects related to dementia are as follows. Number one, we talk about the causes. This is called, is called neuro, neuro, neurogenerative disease. In Alzheimer's disease, is the most common cause, accounting for 60 to 70% of the cases. Other neurodegenerative diseases include what you call Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, and also vascular uh, dementia. And we, also we have vascular uh, causes. Conditions affecting blood vessels can lead to vascular dementia. Other causes, especially what you call Parkinson's disease, Hunting, uh, Huntington's disease, traumatic brain injury, and infections affected the brain such as HIV so all can also contribute the same so those are the major causes we talk about neurogenerative diseases like just such as the Alzheimer accounting for 60 to 70 percent with other neurodegenerative diseases such as Lewy body dementia frontotemporal dementia and also vascular dementia on the vascular factors we have conditions affecting blood vessels which can lead to vascular dementia especially the hypertension part of it. Other causes also, we have Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, trauma, trauma of brain injury, and uh, if infections are affecting the brain, especially in the part of the HIV, can also contribute the same. Signs and symptoms for dementia, number one is about memory loss, particularly recent memories, forgetting appointments or events, difficulty with the familiar task, tasks, challenges with the tasks which were previously routine, Language problems where one trouble finding one's or understanding conversation, disorientation, getting lost in familiar places or losing track of time, uh, poor judgment, making decisions that are inappropriate or risky, changes in mood behavior, uh, mood or behavior, mood swings, agitation or withdrawal, loss of initiative where apathy and lack of motivation 
to initiate activities come, comes in. How do you make a diagnosis for dementia? Clinical evaluation includes detailed medical history, where a cognitive test and assessment of daily functioning is very key. So brain imaging, we can do MRI and CT scan, which can detect brain changes. Blood tests to rule out any possible causes of the symptoms is also very key. On management, we do medication. Well, this medication approach temporarily improves symptoms or a slow progression of the types of dementia, and such as the Alzheimer's disease. Behavioral approaches where strategies to manage symptoms like agitation and rendering are approached. Uh, supportive care where I include assistance with daily activities and emotional support uh, for the for the patient. Supportive care include assistance of daily daily activities and emotional support, clinical trials and decided investigating the new treatment for the therapies. On prevention, healthy lifestyle is very key. Managing chronic conditions such as diabetes, blood pressure and also high cholesterol levels. Uh, stay socially and mentally active is very key where one involves in brain exercises uh, like uh, uh, the, like uh, playing the keyboard, playing the guitar and also filling those puzzles and also learning new skills is very key as a brain exercise. Dementia is very challenging guys. The condition affects millions worldwide. Early diagnosis and appropriate management strategies and ongoing for uh, and ongoing support for the patients are very key for the from the caregivers uh, and also to the healthcare providers to improve the quality of life and manage the progression of the disease. A lot of research is ongoing on parts of dementia, and a lot of information is being shared over the same. So because uh, it has a lot of details and a lot of things which can have not been really revealed over the same. So guys. Uh, the channel is Nazvin. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, I want you to subscribe. By liking the video, you get YouTube to recommend us to the larger population. Why? When you get to like the video, uh, uh, YouTube recommends us. And uh, the difficult, the without a lot of medical jargon, the larger population gets this information. So that you don't, you don't need to be a medic to understand what dementia means, because like you've seen, it affects a lot of a lot of people and millions of people were the same. So information is power, and that's why Vincent is here for you. Guys, welcome to our next video. We love you very much, and peace.